Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So first of all, uh, we'll just quickly, since we are going to be billing specialist, I just wanted to call out the basic background or the history, I will say, about how this whole Salesforce billing com comes into the picture. So back in 2009, right, uh, at this time period, uh, there was already a need uh, because Salesforce, if you remember in back in 1999, Salesforce started just as a basic CRM tool with a basic feature in sales and services. But as time passes, Salesforce started evolving and even today or even five years later, right, now Salesforce is right acting as a whole e solution landscape, the ERP platform where uh, the whole clients are putting their solutions right on that platform. So being a sales, marketing, uh, or now be, once the billing comes, they are trying to put some portion of finance also. In a nutshell, Salesforce has evolved in all the direction. Now, if I will just give you the flavor just a little bit back, back in 2009, 2010, in this time period, sales cloud was a boom in Salesforce. Even today, if you see the revenue model of Salesforce, the most generating revenue cloud right now, in terms of revenue I'm saying, is sales cloud, followed by service cloud. What does that mean? It means two things, right? Because now they are most of the customer base, even today Salesforce has the customer base in, a, in sales cloud. Their most important customers are there in the sales cloud. But the problem with the sales cloud was that there was a, after opportunity management, right? There was nothing concrete to who can drive the sales, the complete sales process being your CPQ and followed by the billing. And that's the reason some clients, you know, hesitate to adopt Salesforce and some clients, even they are using sales cloud after opportunity management forecasting and all, they are using either third party application or something. In that time period, Aptos was a boom. So Aptos came up with a solution, which is nowadays it is called as a Conga CPQ, right? You may thought why I'm talking about CPQ, just to give you the little bit background that overall. So, Aptos came into the picture and this was the first uh, full grown matured application CPQ, right? Which was entirely on Salesforce platform, right? For that, no data integration is required. Uh, um, as a user, I do not feel that I'm going to the different application, right? The way Salesforce CPQ interacts with sales cloud, similarly Aptos did. And that was Aptos was boom and it was heavily backed by Salesforce. I mean, every project, every RFP, whatever is coming, Salesforce, they themselves recommended Aptos as a, one of the solution. But what happened seeing the size of the market and size of the, the business, the, the, the amount of revenue is coming to Salesforce, Salesforce, and in this time period, if you notice the Salesforce journey, right, they change one their strategy. They before earlier back, if you see the Salesforce always try to develop something by their own and they are launching in their own core platform. But what Salesforce realized, of course, if this, this will go with that strategy, the expansion will not be that faster, which they are looking at. And that is where they have started acquiring merger and acquisitions. Even today, if you are speaking multiple clouds which Salesforce has, almost most of them are acquired. Some other third party companies are acquired by Salesforce, right? So during this period, what Salesforce tried to acquire Aptos at the time. And, uh, uh, but did that deal didn't went through. And in this between, if you see Steelbricks, where it started, the acquisition happened actually in 2015, but six years, Steelbrick was there, but it was, not, though it's in a, entirely on Salesforce platform, but there is no much traction in it, right? Uh, means very few customers, small customers, they were using that still break because this tool Salesforce CPQ was originally developed 
and built by steel brick company so steel brick uh, was there in back in 2009 also uh, and then which nowadays we are know, we are basically knowing this tool as a cell so cpq and then 2011 around 11 what there was a, a uk company in voice it which is uh, basically at that time 2011 it was acquired by steelbrick so that's how in voice it the billing solution comes under steelbrick umbrella after acquisition of invoice IT in 2011 and finally in 2015 around right this this partnership is started and full so it, why it's in 2015-16 is because this this uh, this acquisition started back in November December in between and the announcement is around January if I'm not wrong so basically that's how Salesforce acquired Steelbrick and then this both solution comes into the Salesforce landscape solution landscape which is CPQ and the billing so Salesforce billing was nothing but the invoice IT right and uh, and you will see in the package I will show you in the name prefix you will see IT underscore everywhere here in CPQ whoever you guys as some of you have already worked on CPQ you will notice the prefix is SBQQ which is Steelbrick coding right Similarly, for billing, you will see, the, I will show you once we install the package, IT underscore, which is nothing but invoice, I is for invoice and T, invoice IT. So, in nutshell, the summary is these two both solutions are basically uh, are managed package that you have to install as a third party application the way you are installing in Salesforce ecosystem. And after installation, uh, uh, we'll talk about all the licensing and all and all how uh, you will go and assign the licensing how the billings will happen all respect i will tell you right not just the uh, technical part to it okay so this acquisition happened in 2016 and and salesforce but in 2016 the salesforce strategy was first to promote cpq because as i said there was a huge market in cpq billing was a little bit challenging why because there are already strong vendors, mostly the ERP systems uh, uh, were there, right? Like big ERP systems, SAP, NetSuite, Workday, all these these are giant players. Even today, they are they are there in the market. But what Salesforce tried it, whatever is coming. So the, if the first there the the main I will say the marketing you will say or whatever their sales strategy, they tried creating a market for Salesforce CPQ. Now, now I, I think two years back, if you uh, uh, you have seen the announcement revenue cloud, right? The revenue cloud, the whole concept of that to promote the billing. And now they know, so the strategy is okay, all sales cloud customers can use CPQ. Many of the customers already started using CPQ. Now, whoever is using CPQ, it is E4, very easy for them to use Salesforce billing. Why? Because we'll talk about it right there is these two solutions are tightly integrated and many things you do not have to do automatically data will flow from here to here everything will automate it without doing any sort of things so that is how salesforce strategized that to increase the market uh, demand so first they now make this this as a base and now they are selling this solution on top of it okay so so typically in any project, right, uh, you might uh, heard this whole lead to cash implementation, L2C or uh, lead to invoice, right? Any sort of transformation when we are doing with, uh, with the clients or for any client, uh, it could be a variations of multiple technologies. But what we will try to discuss is we will try to talk about whatever Salesforce is offering as an ecosystem we'll talk about it and then followed by whatever the external systems that we need to support this the whole life cycle so what is that all life cycle is right let me just give you one simple example let's say uh, in real time also suppose apple is planning to launch a new iphone model so what they typically do they will just maybe 5 months earlier or 6 months earlier that news started floating in the market or in the so um, on social media 
or maybe on newsletters, radio, TV ads, multiple, whatever the way of communication, all or everywhere these things is started, one some two seconds or five seconds video will come, right? And that's whole marketing start. So in that scenario, typically how does Apple do? I mean, I'm just taking that Apple as one example. So Apple will typically go and ask their their marketing team that this is the marketing budget and you have to plan this whole marketing we are planning to launch this new model of iPhone after six months so this is the time so definitely they need some system to support right and and that is where that's the whole first life cycle starts which comes in Salesforce CPQ so sorry Salesforce ecosystem is a marketing cloud if I will talk is that the only tool in the market no there are other competitors are there but as I said we'll discuss mostly about the Salesforce ecosystem right because we are talking Salesforce billing so in the Salesforce ecosystem the whole lead to cash if I am implementing it the first part of implementation is the marketing cloud within the marketing cloud also there are two main important models one is B2B marketing another is B2C market right so what is B2B uh, means you can categorize the whole business process right typically primarily on two different parts later you can segregate further also but on a high level b2b and b2c so b2b means business to business okay and b2c means business to consumers in customers so in b2b when one business entity a company or a service provider or a manufacturer is selling their services or goods to another company right very simple definition right suppose here Apple is going to sell thousand ten thousand mobile iPhones to let's say Salesforce themselves right because let's say Salesforce is going to iPhone uh, Apple and saying that I need thousand uh, phone because they are basically going to give to all their employees right as in when they are joining they are giving one laptop and one phone right so in that case Salesforce will not go and order that thousand mobile phone from Amazon or will go to any retail shop and they will just buy like that no right in that case Salesforce will reach out directly to company Apple sales persons and say that hey I need thousand mobile phones give me the proper quotation and all and all right so here Salesforce is also one company, Apple is another company. So these types of transactions are B2B transactions. And B2C transactions are like you and me, let's say you need a same mobile phone, what you will do, you will typically go to any outlet or if you go any on e-commerce site, let's say on Amazon, find the phone, click it, add it to the card, do the payment and you will get it. There you are not basically Amazon will not call you or their salesperson will not call you oh, you you are looking for a mobile phone we will give you this quotation that quotation no right here invoicing is also in B2C is entirely different in B2C simple there is an amount which is flashing if you have any coupon code or any voucher apply it if you do not have it just add it to the card do the payment right then and there you have to do the payment then only your order is confirmed and then after your shipment start but in b2b it's not that simple it's a multiple scenarios will come in the in the when we are doing invoicing billing and all and all so in a nutshell using salesforce billing we are going to hit that b2b business model okay so all the examples in lead to cash which i'm going to talk and tell about it is from the b2b but i will keep comparing b2c also right as and when any scenario comes so that it will be easy to connect because we as a consumers are typically in a b2c world however uh, the salesforce cpq salesforce billing these are mostly for b2b business model okay so coming back to my the the initial example where i said uh, as an apple i uh, marketing let's say head i plan for the whole marketing campaign i will launch this campaign so in salesforce ecosystem that tool is typically termed as pardot so in pardot all those will comes as a prospects 
and nowadays these tools are very uh, uh, you know uh, what i will say uh, in a real time example have you guys noticed if you search something uh, and then you open facebook or instagram right you will start seeing the advertisement or suggestions of such products let's say if i'm looking for shoes and then you open in the same browser your any social media you will start seeing some suggestions right pointed ads like okay this shoes that shoes and all how they are doing it right okay they, they are they are nothing but they are basically tracking all the actions even if you are going on apple site or any site right you they will have the data also like how much time you have visited their site which product you are looking at and then you guys might wonder right why i'm getting such emails also marketing emails i never registered anywhere nowadays you do not need to register anywhere moment you will do they will have everything right that is what their whole marketing uh, nowadays dedicated systems are there so point is the whole idea is that get the pointed or actual customers who are really interested in the product and provide the correct suggestion so that is where in salesforce the part dot tool will do right and based on those uh, whole uh, lead refining process it will figure it out who are the actual leads who are really interested and the probability to close the deal is very high with this guy suppose i am really looking for that mo iphone new model and i will you know on a daily basis i will look go on that site and looking for date when it will launch or something right that is my activity as compared to other person who just look at once and he is never coming back and visiting anything right so what tool will identify that i this person looks more interested in buying that that is how it he is keep coming in right those all activities they have track of so having said that again will not go in that detail uh, all those things will happen and then the data will come from the marketing cloud to salesforce sales cloud which is basically that comes as a leads in the sales cloud now if you see the boxes right and purposely it is outside because this is entirely a different system it's a, another acquisition of salesforce okay now but there is a inbuilt connector just to giving you the whole idea though it is nothing to do with the billing but i am giving you the whole idea so there is a inbuilt connector between pardot and salesforce so data you do not need any integration data will come in both the side i mean to and fro both way integration automatically connectors has it so that lead will come here in sales and this is the point i mean it's a handover from marketing team to sales team that hey these are the let's say this team figure it out there are 100 companies which are really interested right so go and talk to them right so this sales guys first time the leads comes in and that is where you, your whole need nurturing process will start so they will first trying to contact you they will send a personalized emails maybe they will try calling you scheduling some um, uh, when you re, i mean when that is where here also right some leads may respond some leads may not respond so some companies are not deleting even those data they are parking those leads as a cold lead and might be in future they will reach out to them but the leads who are really responding let's right? say they are responding to my calls or my chat or my emails anything which means even these guys or these companies are really looking for that product and that's where sales reps will go and convert that lead into opportunity account and contact in salesforce again you can attach with the existing accounts also that's a different thing but from the lead conversion this data will comes in these three objects account contact and opportunity now once the opportunity is there you have again under the sales cloud so what sales team will do sales team will maybe go and trying for giving some demo of their products or some presentation whatsoever that is where the opportunity has a different life cycle right different stages are there prospects negotiating and all and all at one stage when customer will say that hey okay i am okay with uh, all the features or demo whatever you have given me tell me the price so i am looking for let's say 1000 mobile phones for my employer so tell me what is the best price you will offer 
and in cpq not just the price there are multiple negotiations are happening right okay what is the best price you will offer what kind of discounts you will give me what are the services you are going to offer how you will support give me the support right all those things the contract and all so that is handling in your in your cpq tool so typically what you will do you will go and configure products uh, as a product team you will assign or create all the pricings discounting all those things will happen and then as a as a sales rep i will go configure the code approvals documentations all life cycle is there right and let's say after all those things all those negotiations customer agreed or okay with all the pricing terms and condition and finally they will give a go ahead to go and place the order so they may digitally sign it if you if the client is using any uh, e sign tool so salesforce cpq uh, supports uh, uh, or even salesforce billing supports two e sign tool one is your e uh, docu sign and adobe e sign okay so using these two i mean again there is inbuilt connector and all things are there using that client can sign it but it's not mandatory i mean i can just give a my consent over emails also and send it as a hard copy right sign it and send it but the point is once the confirmation i got from uh, in this case let's say salesforce is reaching out to uh, apple so salesforce primary contact person or authorized person give me the consent based on that po number po amount i will go and place the order till we are everything is happening in your cpq okay order is there now this is the point if let's say i do not have salesforce billing uh, right so that is the point where i have to start sending these orders to external system to any billing system to other erp system uh, to do the invoicing invoice presentation we'll talk about all the different stages of invoicing but typically starting from invoice all the other things will happen in back end system now with billing uh, now if you see here again it is representing under one box here if you see this so it means the billing tool is also going to be in the same org in the same uh, ecosystem and data will flow seamlessly uh, means from order automatically i can generate the invoice and all things are happening in billing now after that this this basically represents an erp system so one of the basic questions most of the time very frequent as okay does billing will replace the erp system or if i am using salesforce billing should i go and tell my client that you do not need any erp system the answer is no this is just a billing tool erp has lot many other things related to finance models your receivable your revenue recognition your collections um dunning multiple things are there which we'll talk about all the terminologies right because since billing we will also talk about other financial uh, terminology though it's a part of billing not billing as i said but you should know all those things because you are going to um, because when you are dealing with the clients right they are not know okay what is the capability of billing or not right they will basically you are you are going to uh interact with finance team in the billing right for the cpq you are talking to the sales teams but for billing you will going to talk to their finance team so finance team will ask this kuch types of questions and and the terminologies right so uh, you should be aware of it at least that okay this is what and this is what billing will do this is what billing will not do that we will cover but the point is that it's a not a replacement of erp system erp it will be there even if you i am using billing but mostly there are some inherited problem with the erps mostly in the voice generations which we'll talk about it on a high level of course because we can't go and start discussing erp otherwise our course will never complete but having said that there are some problems and some scenarios which cannot be handled by erp at the time of invoicing so so far companies are doing some finance teams are doing the manual process and again going and uploading the data back to the financial system to match their books which is basically going to be solved by billing that are those are the problems basically addressed by the billing salesforce billing tool okay what are those we'll talk about it
So typically, uh, as you see in the box, once you have the invoice and after that, all the collections, financial parts, receivables, all basically, I mean, now if you have the billing, so instead of sending orders, you are sending invoicing to this financial system that these are your invoice and based on that, you have to go and just adjust the books, right? So that's on a high level overall, right? Now in lead to cash process, there are, it's not, this is just a one life cycle from the invoice standpoint, but in typically uh, you will send this order to let's say fulfillment system. There are multiple fulfillment systems will be there. Um, uh, and here there will be multiple payment gateways, uh, tax, tax calculation system, all those things will be there, right? So just an illustration of a, picture from lead to invoice, right? It's not whole lead to cash uh, architecture, right? Just wanted to clear that out. So the question is, uh, as I said, okay, uh, billing is not a entirely replacement of ERP that we discussed. It means that even in your Salesforce billing, there will be ERP system. But ERP will do the core financial part, not the invoicing, which is basically not specialized in. Now we have very specialized tool, which will do sort or taking care of all invoicing scenarios. And based on that, ERP will do all the math, right? So then, I mean, that leads to another question. Then can you tell me what is specific, why I need Salesforce billing? On a very high level, uh, right now these pointers are there, but as I said, as we, we go deep into it, we'll discuss and we'll, we'll figure it out and we will realize that. But on a high level, what is happening, right? It is giving you a seamless experience. First, let's talk about the user experience. So your opportunity, code, order, invoice, everything is on same system, same, nothing going in and out, no integration is required no data, uh, uh, you do not have to build any system or any transformation logic, right? Because, and most important thing, the use case which billing will solve is, because most of the time before billing, where we were struggling in little cash project is to match the order amount and invoice amount. You may say, why, what is that difficult in that? If I ordered anything, let's say $100 or thousand dollar right then I will generate an invoice of thousand dollar what is the problem in that the problem comes with the multiple variations which we will talk about it but let me give you very simple right so let's say if I will do some order based on uh, in a fraction so instead of thousand it is coming in Salesforce CPQ the way progression happens and system calculates let's say it is coming 1000.45 right but when it goes to the another system their proration their rounding behavior and the logic might be different then it might not come exactly 1000.45 it might come 1000.44 also or 46 also this is very generic right there are other other scenarios will come in invoicing all I'm trying to say, then you have to write a bunch of things in that integration layer or some from application layer or anywhere to match the invoice total. That was, and these all issue is not there in the billing because the, both the systems are in the same place. See, billing supports all the prorations method, what CPQ supports and vice versa. So my, that basic problem is solved. So two thing, important thing. One is your seamless data flow user experience and specialized invoicing scenarios which right now I do not want to go otherwise it will be very difficult to understand as and when will topic will reach we'll talk about it and at the last the total matching total is always a challenge in in, in previous or even even today's world if we are not using a billing then we have to take care of it right it's I'm not saying it's not possible of course uh, even before billing also uh, companies are using it so sometimes you will see the finance team is very very you know heavily loaded because they are doing manual uh, adjustments right to match the total and all right and and 
sometimes you will see yes there is a revenue leakage some companies have reported one of the another issues uh, and why they want a suspicious billing is one of the important reason also is a revenue leakage what does that mean it means uh, as i said right let's say when i uh, when one system is doing rounding another system is doing some different way of rounding so there will be a dollar difference so that dollar ultimately client will pay or customer will pay what in you are sending the invoice right the order amount is really basically uh they are not going to pay that amount but sometimes customers come can come and complain also hey at a time of quoting you gave me 1000.45 dollar now you are sending me invoice of 1000.46 why is like that i'm just saying very small number you may say that who will really care about 0.45 0.46 but it could be a big number also depending upon the different different scenarios so point is if my order total and invoice total is not matching it is one of the biggest problem right because client may say that okay you have asked me to this is what i have to pay at a time of quoting now you are sending me invoice of this why the order total problem will also come suppose 1000 dollar let's say forget about the fraction 1000 dollar is that order amount but as a client i agreed upon okay you will do the monthly payment so you will pay this entire 1000 dollar in let's say in 12 months so what billing system will do you as a sales rep has negotiated it and put it in the order and the quote okay payment term will be this 12 months and amount is 1000 dollar now what billing system needs to do billing system has they the billing system has to send 12 invoices right every month they have to send one invoice because that is what sales rep has agreed upon now if you do the math 1000 divided by 12 you will start seeing some fractions so every month there is some fractional value will come in each invoice but when you do the whole total right you will end up maybe 1000 more than 1000 or less than 1000 it's a simple math right whenever you are trying to divide something and it coming in fraction and again if you are doing the read total you will see a certain difference so those are the inherited problem uh, uh, even today is there right and uh, I, i have seen in many projects where billing is salesforce billing is not there literally there is you know teams are basically fighting like anything to match this and do multiple a uh, patchwork right to figure it out but with all those things uh, uh, now this is one of the solution i will say which will help the the whole problem right just because it's not that salesforce billing done some magic the, the whole point is it's the same system it's within the salesforce cpq and the billing so both are basically following the same data same nomenclature same methodology that's why this problem will not come we'll talk about it. now one of the question uh, always ask that um, uh, do i mean do i need cpq let's say if my client or my company is not using salesforce cpq can i use billing independently right this can be your client question might be even not today in future one client may come and say that and ask that that can i can i use a billing only i do not want to use or i do not have cpq or maybe i am using other cpq let's say i am using conga cpq can i use billing in that so back early days it was not possible okay um uh, earlier you have to install salesforce cpq then basically you are basically going and installing the billing but now as i said uh, earlier right salesforce has changed their strategy now then they want to basically promote billing further so they made it independent what does that mean it means that i can go and install billing also and uh, with other this this can work as a other cpq too means i can generate the invoice but the point is uh will it give you all the good flavor of salesforce billing no because most of the things as i said is tightly integrated with cpq so you will not get all the benefit of salesforce billing 
so typically in a nut set what billing is looking at salesforce billing is looking at order and order line item so if you are not using salesforce cpq let's say if i am using conga cpq so conga cpq has their own order and order line item so i have to write a logic or create some interface like that that i have to copy that data from one order order line item to billing order order line because for billing the source of truth is always order and order line now this could be uh, you know when we you are basically uh, some companies are coming that hey i have a other e commerce portal from where they are placing the orders right they are not using cpq so some companies you have seen that they have uh, enabled the portal for their partners right so their partners are directly logging into that portal and ordering it do it's again it's a part of b2b only it's not b2c so it's a valid scenario because partner is ordering something in that case can i use billing the answer is yes so any form no matter what scenario you will give my only answer is if you are using e-commerce site if you are using other cpq no matter what you have to write a interface to copy or bring the data to order and order line item here and from order and order line only my billing life cycle will start if you are using if i am using salesforce cpq i do not have to write any or develop any interface to bring the data to the order it will follow seamlessly right that's the benefit right second thing is the second catch is because invoice will have invoice line and invoice line will have products right so if let's say if i'm using conga cpq so conga has their own product structure they have their own product object but if i'm using billing so i have to go and configure the products right as per the salesforce billing object so i'm just telling you all the flavors right this is the happy path i mean i have salesforce cpq so i do not have to go and configure product again cpq has already configured the product i will only populate certain fields which billing uh, billing system is looking at right we'll talk about all those things so my whole effort will be saved here right i do not have to maintain the product twice two places i do not have to create any interface or any any uh, logic to bring the data on order and order line so that is all all good part of cpq uh, but can i use it without um, cpq answer is yes yeah sorry just a quick question what are the contracts on the list sorry can you come again yeah i don't see contracts uh, on these orders the orders and the invoices in the contract component contract will not play any role over here in the billing right so once your order is activated even if you do not contracted your order if you are talking in salesforce cpq so once you contracted your order then your contract subscription asset will create right but for billing that's really doesn't matter all they are looking once you activate your order you can go and generate the invoice part of it okay right so billing will not look at the contract that's the reason uh, i didn't put it over here okay okay i will show all the life cycle anyways um you may ask by the way it's a good question uh, you may ask uh, like why why billing is designed like that why they are not looking at the contract right so typically uh, you know it's company to companies right some companies are saying that hey uh, i want to generate invoice immediately as and when i place the order so that i can send it to the client i will not wait for the fulfillment uh, uh, or we should not wait for uh, you know the shipping and all so unless my whole order is not fulfilled and all right some companies are not creating contracts for that right they are basically waiting for that because once you create a contract that becomes the assets and subscriptions with an certain active start date and end date right so most of the companies are waiting for the fulfillment before con marking that order as a contract but what if as a company i want to generate invoice before that let's say i'm selling hardware products 
So maybe let's say shipment will take 10 days, 12 days or whatsoever. Uh, but I can't or so company should not wait for that. So having such use cases what and that is why I said for billing to work the only source of truth is order and order line. It is not looking at your contract, subscriptions, asset, nothing. So even any third, from any third party order is coming, all we have to go and feed the data here on the order and order. So what are the two things you have to plan? Products and order and order line. You may not have to go and configure all the uh, pricing rules also because if you are not using CPQ, what is the point of pricing rules? All you have to say that, okay, I have sold this product with $10, $20, $30. That's what billing will need and billing will generate the invoice based on that. Right? Uh, I have so, a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so if what if there, if there is a configured product, right? I mean, there are, if this becomes simpler, if it is a non-configured product, it's a simple product and uh, with simple pricing and that can be plugged in from an external system. But what if there is a configured product and uh, the invoice has to be uh, prepared for the configured product, right? And the line items are, uh, you know, uh, there are multiple invoice line items, the product is broken down and the invoicing is also a little bit complex. In that scenario, uh, I mean, uh, if, if CPQ is not being used, then in order to get that configurable product in the system, the product has to be configured, right? For it to get in that manner in into an order, in into a billing order. Okay. Get, got it, got it. Yeah, so, See, as I said, product should be there, of course. In the that's why I said now you will have two source of product table. One is uh, for because your invoice line will have the products. Now, the whole configuration things, right? Billing is really not bother about, right? Uh, let's say for an example, I'm selling desktop. Under that, I have I have sold processor, RAM, hard disk, motherboard, whatsoever. Ultimately it's all lie downs to here as an order line item, right? That is structure is needed for your contract subscriptions and asset because when you are doing amendments and renewals based on that system will create quote quote line item and show it on the card. But if you just talk about plain billing, so billing you have, let's say one bundle has 10 parts and which has a certain dollar amount, you have inserted here at the order line level. Invoice will simply look at, okay, $10, $20, $30, total $100, $100 invoice will come, right? So the structure wise invoice, and that is why in the, even in the ERP systems, whenever we are sending the information, ERP system, do, do you think that ERPs are, we are basically sending all the entire product structures to ERP system? No. Even the ERP system are saying that they are really not bothered. That's the CPQ team specialized with. The ERP system cannot have the attributes, cannot have multi line level bundle and all and all. They are basically saying, tell me the line items, SKUs, whatever you have sold and tell me the price that you have ordered. The net price, what does they matter to, right? It's all code finance. So, but yes, if I have to do, uh, you know, from here order, let's say I'm activating it, making it contract. And then after I will, I want to use that contract for further amendments and renewals. Yes, your product structure matter. And the way you CPQ maintains the relationship behind the scene, there are multiple fields value which CPQ maintains to let system know which one is the parent, which one is the bundle and all and sort. Those you have to go and populate it since if things are coming via integration and that is where you need more uh, field mapping and and more uh, idea about it but from if since i'm talking plain from the billing standpoint billing standpoint will really not bother about the entire product structure and even in the erps we are not sending the entire we are just sending 
and even we are filtering the bundle products most of the times right whenever we are sending the informations to rp systems we are not sending because even ERP team, finance team is saying why you are sending me zero dollar value line item. Let's say my package or my main component, main main parent product does not have any price. Simply they will say filter it out. Send it to fulfillment system, right? Because they need it. They need to, the engineering team, they need to configure it. Shipping team, they need to ship it. That's fine. But for finance team, they will not really bother about zero dollar products, right? So that's how we'll do. And I'm just giving the flavor to it. Again, if you ask me, uh, do you recommend really not to use CPQ and just use billing? Answer is no. My recommendation is of course go with that so that you will you, you will get all the benefits of billing, right? So I will just quickly, I mean, uh, uh, today we'll continue from here, but I just wanted to call out this flow and then we'll talk about the actual, some of the use cases, why it is really important to integrate CPQ with billing, but this slide we'll cover tomorrow. Quickly, uh, if you see this slide, right, this slide, as I said earlier also, it's plainly talking about CPQ and billing. In between, there are other things are there. So till ordered, order activation all are happening in CPQ uh, because uh, and I'm assuming that client is using CPQ by the way because we will see and in, even on our training org I will install CPQ and then billing on top of it right so once your order is activated no matter your contract is created not created doesn't matter this order is ready for invoice right now here we can go and manually create invoice immediately. We will we will see that I will go and simply go and check one checkbox. Uh, it will create an invoice or I can create a schedule or I can schedule basically like, okay, this date or by month of this date generate an invoice, which we will talk. But in both the way you can create invoice in Salesforce billing. So what will happen moment you will do that system will look at the order total order line total it will create invoice and invoice lines in the in the system and of course that will show as a due amount correct post that you have to go and post the invoice posting invoicing is meaning that you are sending that invoice to the customer and in your laser entry you are saying that this is on a I mean there is a book right credit book debit book there there you will basically go and in so that now once the customer received the invoice right and within that there will be a payment link now the first question is does Salesforce billing has any payment gateway of course payment gateway there are three four different payment gateways which Salesforce billing supports but payment gateway is always a third-party application it's not the capability of Salesforce billing right like bill desk and there are others uh, P, PU, PZ right these are the all different different uh, third party interfaces are there right which are specialized in the payments but you can integrate if you want to collect the payment in Salesforce billing you can integrate it there are inbuilt connectors are there but some companies are saying no just send us the invoice uh, we will tackle the payment in, in ERP system right so they will basically send that invoice from the ERP system right once the payment basically uh, I'm again on a very high level I'm just covering it for just to give you the idea right the life cycle because now we are doing double click initially I just told you on a very high level invoice uh, lead to invoice life cycle now I'm going little bit deeper and as I said each topic is a itself is a topic which requires a session so Typically the payment uh, will be paid by the customer, let's say, and once it will be going through some banking channel, right, the payment. And post, once the payment is posted, means the client has done the payment, that payment amount will be allocated to invoice. If the allocation will not happen, system will always show this me as a due amount. Okay, it will always show, okay, $1,000 is due on that customer. So this payment allocation, uh, uh, even though you are doing, let's say, this payment in any third-party application, any ERP, that information has to come back to the billing, saying that, hey, that payment is done. Now there will be multiple scenarios, right? It could be partial payment. Let's say a client did not pay all the $1,000. They just paid $200. Then system should show me that 
800 is the due, 200 is paid, all those things capabilities are there. But you have to allocate that payment back to basically tag that payment to invoice. And after that, there, so here, let's say one scenario is, okay, all $1,000 client paid. Okay, and I will adjust all the $1,000 against this invoice and my, that in that due amount will be zero, invoice will be closed, settled, done and dusted. After that, all your uh, financial will start, your your credit, uh, sorry, your revenue recognitions and then uh, the general ledgers, all books are updated. But there are scenarios where cancellations might come into the picture, right? Let's say after payment or even before payment or partially payment, at any stage, client is saying that, hey, I do not need let's say this even in this case Salesforce will say that hey earlier I ordered thousand mobile phone but now I don't think that thousand I really needed I need 500 so please cancel the the order for 500 right now in such cases uh, how we will go and tackle it in Salesforce billing so because of course um, it's a negative amount so uh, either I can go and you know release a credit notes Credit notes are nothing but again adjusting the invoices, negative amounts in certain ways, uh, or the or I will see give you a very simple example in in today's world. Let's say you have ordered something and after that you are cancelling that right after payment. What nowadays companies offering you? They have their own wallet, right? What they are saying that okay, if it is a hundred dollar, okay, I will put it in your wallet. They are saying e wallet. And immediately that e-wallet you are start seeing hundred dollar, and they are saying you can use it at any point of time, or maybe you can play, put it in any order. They did not actually return your hard money, actual money, right? In this case, there is no banking transaction involved. They simply have created one e-wallet within their ecosystem, and they have started showing against your account, right? That is the clear cut, very basic, simple understanding of credit notes in B2B. In B2B, what they will do, they will actually not refund the actual money. So there is no banking transactions involved in it. That let's say out of thousand dollar, I'm canceling it for 500. Negative invoice will be generated for 500. I will create a credit. If the payment is already done, of course, if payment is not done, that's fine. I mean, you have to now you have to just pay 500. But let's say client has paid thousand dollar and now I have to return 500 company will gen create a cre generate an a credit note against this account or against this invoice and that can be settled against any other invoices of that account right we will see all those things so that is where you mostly the credit notes are on a very basic example I am trying to put it uh, as we will go deeper we will take all the scenarios and talk more technical terms but that is your credit note your wallet amount is nothing but a credit note which is issued by the that company or that supplier or that manufacturer that is how in the B2B world also work now since you can use that wallet money in any other order when you are going and placing in the future that's how here also it works that if I if that particular account will go and place any other order and if there is any due amount I can adjust that due amount using this credit note but there are some scenarios where client or customer is saying no I I really I do not have any let's say any future plan recent future plan where I'm going and placing an order I need this money back so that's where the refund will come and refund is the process where you are basically getting the actual money back to your bank account or whatever the payment if you have done the payment through credit card so you will get a notification that refund process is initiated you will get it within two three business days like that so why is that because there it's the actual money is transferring via banking channel okay so even in this case also, you have to ultimately see everything will tied with the invoice. If I am refunding any amount, I have to basically adjust that amount to the invoicing. Or even if I am doing any credit notes, I have to do that adjustment towards invoicing. So all things are happening in billing. One last thing is, if you see here, I have uh, put it here, taxation, right? 
why it's not here or even it should be ideally over here right order amount plus tax would be your total invoice amount correct so one question um, uh, sometimes client asks that uh, does billing has that capability to calculate taxes right the answer is yes or no also right so why yes if you see the core feature of billing has that capability to calculate tax but why no no because it's a very basic feature i will say i mean if you have a very simple tax uh, tax calculation system or let's say mechanism for an example i will say for this country this state apply 10% that type of taxation will will basically cpq billing will support but if you have a complex taxation policy there are multiple factors which is deciding uh, different different taxes i mean country like us india brazil these countries have a very complex taxes and multiple slabs right multiple factors different products different taxes in right in number of factors are there so that billing has doesn't have that much of capability to configure your taxes system like that it will only support as i said we and we will cover the taxes and also right it's not that it's we are not most of the projects we are not using this taxes and model of billing but even though i will cover it so that you should know what billing can support okay so that is why i said yes or no no we are because most of the projects we are not using it because you, i mean most of the clients let's say us is a major country how will say that no or how i will make sure that okay tomorrow any other company is coming or any other country like they have changed their taxation policy or the taxation rule now i am saying oh this is not going to support so i need a mature tool right who can handle all the different uh, scenarios of taxes so the question is in project what are the tax tools external uh, third party application we are using typically uh, in most of the projects we are using two tools one is avalara and another is vortex these are the two tools which uh, i have been basically using in most of the engagements and these are like uh, even for the avalara and vortex there are inbuilt connectors are also there with salesforce billing so typically what this system does is right system will basically seize the order and based on your bill to or ship to whatever you can configure it right based on which country which state uh taxes needs to be calculated and then this system will calculate the tax based on whatever rule that is configured in that uh, tax system and it will basically give back the tax amount uh to to at the order level and then after uh, i can go and generate the invoice to see the total okay if you are using the external uh, otherwise if i am using the internal taxes system uh we can we i mean uh, invoice can take care of both right so in our training we will use this right we, we because third party application is not in our scope so i will try to cover this module also and will generate the invoice including order and taxes both so uh for now today uh, uh, just i wanted to cover the high level any question yeah so, yeah i have yeah. a question right so are we not covering like you know because uh previously we we have to start one project previously but we did not started that so in the thread they are expecting billing rule billing treatments and revenue recognition rule uh, revenue recognition treatments and distribution method are we not covering those okay yeah so yes i mean uh theory wise will definitely cover as i said it's a part of the training so revenue recognition general ledger and all uh salesforce billing is not that matured enough okay uh but no, as i said part of advanced, it is part of advanced billing right advanced salesforce billing in the trial head also we have right i mean advanced super advanced billing badge is there a super badge in that yeah that is a this. super badge uh, i am coming to that right just hold a sec that is the trail head on trail mix you are talking about advanced billing and all what i am trying to say that the part we will cover whatever is the capability we are not leaving anything that's why i highlighted taxes and or, or any such 
but revenue recognition and the general ledger is a very very big thing in the finance which is the whole ERP is based out of this right which is if you seen the billing it just they have created one or two objects revenue recognition treatment and revenue recognition is that going to solve all the use cases of B2B answer is no does it have all the capability of if you say SAP or NetSuite can replace with this billing that's why I said in the very early and even if you go and read uh, I will anyways forward all the health Salesforce link also they have first liner they are saying that Salesforce billing is not the replacement of ERP system it's not okay now the point what I'm trying to put over here is I'm trying to give the flavor what project how projects are operating of course can do we cover it of course we will cover it right because uh, it's a module is there so why not we'll talk about it what is the capability but will it solve or will it basically um, solve my whole B2B will it replace my ERP no because this is more like a pure invoicing tool it's not a ERP tool yet okay can I ask a question, uh, Ashish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in this scenario where, let's say, the revenue recognition, some rule is not getting fulfilled with advanced billing, then in that case, uh, or in other cases also, the invoice that is completely created and treated in Salesforce billing has to be replicated to an ERP system any which ways right for further for accounts receivable accounts mm -hmm. payable etc etc et am I right mm -hmm. yeah I that's correct? what I said once yes so once you have the invoices you have to send that invoices back to ERP systems to do further financial uh, calculations being your but, uh, ER general ledger anything sure 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 sorry sorry to interrupt you but uh, so here's the thing so i mean what is then what uh, becomes the usp of salesforce billing if the invoice has to be replicated to let's say a system like sap sap r3 right uh, you know if the invoice then the invoice invoice has to be configured there for it to be replicated right so that so then the customer can come come around and say that you know i anyways have to replicate the invoice to a, to a system like sap no, no 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 hold on so replication means see there are you do not have to go and do all sort of invoicing rules uh you do not have to go and create uh, multiple all you have to just fit the data in the invoice and invoice line the table in sap so that they it can because you have the invoice generated right all they just need and oh. that data understood right? understood so the table gets updated and it gets reflected as an invoice yeah. so if up. i can show you right just for, for since you guys if you see this is salesforce help document it says just a supplementing and if you see this line hmm. right and there is nothing called advanced billing right they have created one trailhead where they are the basic is that trail mix and something uh, so there is a label to it so once you will cover this go to that so forget about that trailhead package wise there is no separate functionality called billing and advanced billing okay so what i'm trying to say here is that uh, uh, billing is not going to replace your erp but mostly in the subscription business uh, the generating mostly the usage based product invoicing and subscription based the ERP has multiple issues okay uh, and they have multiple challenges also for one time it's very easy for ERP to handle but for mostly for usage collections and uh, recurring billings they do not have and, and those ERP systems are not that configurable the way Salesforce platform is right so that is where this tool comes into the picture mostly for handling recurring and uh, your uh, usage based invoices okay so 
the engine the whole engine in this that is there in the billing all once i have created a successful invoice with a correct amount now i will just feed that data to my erp system that this is the amount and this is the uh, invoice that you have to recognize for this period this is the payment receivable all and all so basically the the core finance will be still will be there in the erp it's not going to replace by the bill but the question is and that is why it's, it's not you most of uh, you know when even i started looking at billing it's very confusing that then why Salesforce is probably saying that they have general laser, they have uh, revenue recognition, all those things are there. So the thing is, it's an, uh, you can say that this tool is doing a one level filter work. Being your revrec, is that billing is that replacement of revrec? No. It just that have the basic set of data, which you can feed it to the downstream system. But invoicing generation is basically i will say where this tool is matured enough and that's why they have named it as a salesforce billing it never said uh, it's an uh, erp right which is basically your salesforce finance nothing like that the name is billing so simple you will have the invoice you will have the payment you have credit note debit note you have refunds all those things can billing can handle but code rubric part, code financial part, your general lasers, ARs, receivables, and all liabilities, these all are still will be in your ERP. It's not like that if you are using or implementing billing, you are basically getting rid of the ERP systems for any client. Basically, this is going to solve their problem for usage-based invoicing and the recurring invoices. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.